Welcome to Wireguild. The tutorials I'm going to do today I call the versatile cabochon wrap pendant. Versatile because it really doesn't matter what you put inside the wrap, it will work on just about anything. Your materials you're going to need, obviously you're going to need a cabochon, you're going to need some 21 gauge dead soft square wire and you're going to need some 21 gauge half hard half round wire. Now the amounts that you're going to use will depend on the size of your cabochon so we'll sort of go through that. Now this is the cabochon that I'm going to use and it is a sort of triangular type shape one. Very pretty, I, c I can't remember even what it's made out of but <laughs> I like the colour. Uh, so this is my square wire. Now the way I work out how much I need is dependent on the size of the cabochon. So my cabochon is about one and a half inch per side. So all the way around that's going to be about four and a half inches. So I like to have my wire about three times the length of the circumference of the piece. So if my cabochon is sort of four and a half inches round, I've got about 13 and a half, 14 inches of wire. Now what I'm doing with the wire, I've got four lengths of that, is I am just stroking it out now with my cloth because I don't want curls, I want nice flat sort of pieces. So using a cleaning cloth, I'm just rubbing the wire right now, that's what I'm doing. If you want to use less, you can do. Allow yourself at least a couple of inch for the bale. But other than that, you'll be able to manage. If you're having a teeny tiny bale, the circumference of your stone plus a couple of inch for the bale will be sufficient. I like to use my wires to do a design around the stone so I like more which is why I go further three times. If you like very very ornate, um, lots of curls, lots of swirly bits and you're going to go out all over, give yourself a little bit more. So I've straightened all my wire out and I've now got my four pieces of wire nice and flat there. Now if you want to put masking tape on or holding tape of some form you can do. I never bother. I don't like cleaning the sticky residue off. I just push it between a pair of pliers, push it with my fingers, make sure that it's nice and flat. And I have always just used my fingers. So I'm going to use that as the bottom so I need my wire to go around that bottom piece but we're going to bind it together. So once I bound it, it needs to sit on the bottom. So I'm thinking about how much binding do I want? How far do I want my binding to come up the sides of the piece? You still need to put little bends in that are going to hold the stone in place. So if I was to bind this all the way up and round, it would be of no use stone to fall out. So I've got some 21 gauge here. I'm just going to snip some of this off. This There really is. There's far too much here. Um, I've just taken some off the reel. I've probably got I don't know, maybe about 12 inches altogether. So making sure that the flat side is down and the domed is up, I put a really nice sharp bend in there. There we go on that sharp bend. This makes it easier to bind our wires together. So I'm straightening them up again, then I get that nice sharp bend that I put in the binding wire and then just, I can get hold of it, not quite straight. If you use your pliers like this, the wires have got to be flat because there isn't room for them to be higgledy-piggledy inside pliers. So over the top, now I've just popped the end underneath my fingernail to hold it and then I'm wrapping round and pressing down with my pliers and round again and press down. When we're binding what we're attempting to create is a nice flat piece of metal. We don't want a bunched up area, we're not gathering these four wires into a little clump. We want a nice flat bit. 
so I will keep binding around until I feel you know I've, I've got a nice amount that's going to look nice at the bottom of the stone now if you were using a an oval stone or a round stone or anything like that it works exactly the same way there's no difference that I'm using a sort of triangular one so my binding keeps going around don't rush your bindings your bindings are a very noticeable part and if you make your bindings higgledy piggledy by rushing them it's something that when you look at the piece of jewellery afterwards when you've finished it that is really really noticeable neat tight bindings are something that I don't know it lifts the whole piece of jewellery makes it look more professional so take your time with your binding press it down with your pliers now nice and flat like that with a nice flat piece now have I got enough here no, I, I need more. If I bend that to go around the stone, there's going to be virtually nothing, you know, sort of coming up either side. I would always say, don't do less than, oh, let's just, can you see a little bumpy bit there? That's where I started. I never get it quite as tight. So just get hold of your pliers, pull it back down and pull it up tight. And then it's all nice and smooth. You don't get a bumpy bit. with bindings if you were going to say oh you know I don't, I don't want so many I just just want a few bindings on maybe you're doing an oval and you wanted you know just just a few bindings at the bottom I'd always suggest never to use less than say three three wraps round and don't get giddy and go all the way around the side of the piece because if you go all the way around the side of the piece your stone's gonna fall out so now I've got a little sticky bit there so I just need to trim a bit off I'll just lift it up trim it with my snips and then just flatten it down there we go nice and smooth now let's look at the other side yeah let's trim that off I've got enough now so we trim off and we flatten down with the pliers all the little tiny bits go straight into the scrap pot so I now need this piece of wire to fit around the bottom of my stone now this would be just the same if I was doing it that way around I'd just need to bend it slightly you know a curve and then I'd bend up around the sides but you know I do like it better that way so my cut edges are on that side so that will be the inside of the piece and then using my pliers I'm just going to bend this to replicate that point if you were using a round stone or an oval stone obviously you wouldn't use your pliers to bend it you would just push it against the stone or use something roundish to bend it around the sides of my stone are curved so I need the sides of my wire to curve so I'm just stroking the wire with my finger and just adding that ever such a slight curve into the wire and just that's it pull the wire through so that's kind of the shape it needs to be a little bit more pointed and put it back on obviously you would work to whatever shape you've got I've got these really sharp corners here and I'm going to need some more binding and I'm going to put the binding just underneath where the corner is so just squeeze those wires together because they were coming apart in the middle my binding wire exactly the same as I used on the bottom so it's a 21 gauge and I'm going to make sure that it's flat side down and just put a nice sharp bend in it always with a nice sharp bend wrap around my wires as I said if this makes it easy for you can you see I just clicked it underneath my index finger there that stops it going blah, blah, you know sort of whizzing around when you pull it around blah, probably isn't a very good destructive term sorry about that anyway I'm going to bind this around a few times if this was a really tiny stone you were doing you probably wouldn't need like the shoulder bindings in place 
With really small stones you can get away without putting any in. But this is, is quite a decent sized stone is this, so I need them in place. So I think that's probably enough. Let's just get them to the inside. I'm making sure all the time that these wires are kept flat and straight by holding with my pliers. I'm not gripping over tight. I aren't wanting to mark the wire in any way. It's just it's just put over the top of the wire so that they stay flat and straight. There we go. Let's trim these ends off. Let's have a look. Okay. Then I'll just put it back against the stone. Yeah, lovely. Just underneath that corner. That's wonderful. That's where I want it. Nice is that. Now, I need to do the same on the other side. Now, I aren't one for measuring these exactly. It's just about there that I need to wrap. I put my fingers on. You can get ply uh, rulers out and measure if you want to, but I don't, you know. I like the fact that it flows and that it's all done just purely by eye. So another bend in my binding wire and I am going to wrap around this side. There we go, let's just tighten that down with my pliers. If you tighten down with your pliers every time, you are maintaining the flatness of the wire. And the fact that you're using square wires they do tend to sit together quite well. So just wrapping around. Now, how many do I have on the other side? I think I've got five, I think, on the other side. So I need to really have the same amount on that side. So I just pull that one tighter. Wrap around. Flatten down. And flatten down. Yeah. So we trim these bits off at the back. There we go. Press it down with my pliers. And trim that one. Whoops, hit the camera. Sorry about that. Whoops, straight those up again. There we go. Uh, and then press that side down. Now let's have a look. So if I push the wires back onto the stone, they're not exactly identical. They have moved. The, the, the one on the left is, is slightly lower than the one on the right. And also, I'm going to have to shift a bit because moving the camera has put me in a different position. There we go, you can see now. What I need to do is bring these wires around that corner, so holding it tight to the floor, I've got a little bend in there now. If you were doing an oval, obviously you wouldn't need to do this, you would just follow that nice soft oval shape. If you were doing a circle, you would be coming in around the circle. There we go. So that's roughly the shape of my stone. Now, holding it on the stone, I'm going to see where I want the joint. I like the gap. I like a gap in the middle of the top. However, if you want it to go all the way around, you would just press those all the way in. Just untwiddle them until it came right in onto the top of the stone. But I like a little gap like that. Especially if you're selling. If you're selling, there's a certain amount of perceived value about the size of something. And even if you've got a gap in the top, it makes the whole piece look bigger. Therefore, more perceived value. So, I'm just going to bring these together in the middle at the top, just with my fingers. So, there's a slight bend there, like that. And the same on the other side. Now, this is where the two wires, or two groups of wire anyway, are going to meet, like that. So now with my pliers I can just straighten those up, making sure that the four wires on the left and the four wires on the right are kept perfectly straight. Again, if you want to use masking tape, you can do, but I find it easier just with my fingers. So bring these 
together and what we are aiming for is nice flat two rows of wire that sit together like that. This is fiddler. But I want to bind now those bits together in two rows of four. This is not just a big clump of eight wires. If you do it as a big clump of eight, when we get to doing the bale later on you'll find it more difficult. So really, really try to get just two rows of four wires. So I put my bend in my half round binding wire. This is exactly the same binding wire as we've used everywhere else. And then I'm going to bind those two bits together. Sorry I'm going out of shot. But you know what I'm doing because you've seen me doing binding before. So I just press that down with my pliers and wrap around and around. I kind of like binding. It's sort of very satisfying and a little bit calming. <laughs> um, so I'm going to put several. It's a large pendant. If you had a much smaller stone, I would suggest going around fewer times, but like I said, don't go less than three, because anything less than three, and it's not got the strength to hold anything. So I'm still making sure that my wires are nice and straight and parallel. Let's just pull that tight and take it up a little bit further. There we go. Now you could, if you want, if you've only got 18 gauge wire kicking around, you could use that. It's just that the, the 21 is, is less obtrusive, but it doesn't make any difference. I mean, if you haven't got any binding wire at all, you could use a square wire to do this. Um, you could use oddments and offcuts and bits of spare wire to bind around, but the half round wire... <coughs> sorry, my voice is going. The half round wire is, is much neater. So I've got my shape and now I just need to make sure if I was using something like that different piece altogether obviously it would be a totally different thing and a different type of shape but it would work just the same so let's just pop my stone ah, get it the right way around that helps there we go and my stone just pops back in so now I've got a nice flat back so I need to make some little prongs if you like to hold the stone in place. Now you can either use round nose pliers for this or you can use sort of flat ended square pliers. They both give a different look. These are my broadest ones and I'm going to show you what it looks like when you use flat ones and I'll show you on the front uh, the round ones because that's like a curvy soft shape. Uh, whereas the square pliers are a very strong geometric line. So I'm going to grip the very, very back wire near the binding and just that one back wire. Now I need to support the piece. So I've got the back wire there, just that one. Finger and thumb on that binding there okay and then my other fingers are just supporting all the way around the framework so that it doesn't lose its shape and I'm gripping just that back wire and then just bend inwards it's that easy there you go as you can see it's very geometric nice strong broad line because I use the square pliers now then if you wanted a soft line obviously you'd use a round nose pliers. I'm going to do exactly the same thing again. I'm supporting the framework with my fingers and thumb. Grip the back wire. Whoops! Click off. Move that out of the way. Just back wire and bend in. That's it. Now these are just strong enough now that when we pop our stone in it doesn't want to go in now. In you go. Sometimes it takes a little bit of wriggling. It will just... There we go. Pop it in. It's enough to make sure that the bottom of that stone does not fall out. And actually it's quite secure is this one now. It's uh, Mind you, you couldn't finish it like that. You have to do 
a little bit more. So now I need to do the little prongs that are going to come over the front of the piece. If we had um, a deeper stone, it's very flat is this, but if we had something like this, which is all ridgy and bumpy and lumpy and very sort of natural, you'd need to lift these prongs up and you do that just by popping your pliers in and just lifting them up and that gives you a little bit more room to accept something that's lumpy and bumpy. If you were using a gemstone, a faceted stone like this that's got um, a deep back, obviously then your prongs that you were making would have to be at an angle rather than flat so that they would sit down the sort of back of the stone. But this is for a cabochon so it's nice and flat on the back. Now I'm just going to separate off the top wire and I tend to do this with my fingernails if you can't, you could use a knife and just twist it, pop a knife in and twist, but I really don't care what my fingernails look like, so I tend to use those. Now once I've got a little gap, I can get my round nose pliers and slide them into the gap. It doesn't want to slide in the gap. Just keep just keep easing in until it goes down. Give myself a little bit more room, that might be necessary. In and down. In. This will definitely be easier for you. I find this very difficult because what I'm, I am is at my arm's reach because of course I've got the camera between me and my work so I don't see quite as well as you do when you're actually holding the piece at a more sensible gap. So you get the pliers in and you wriggle them down and then you can grip and bend. There we go. And what you will get is you'll get the same sort of prong if you like that will hold your stone in place but instead of that strong geometric line that we have on the back, can you see how it's pulled the top one in as well? That's brilliant because it pulls the top one in and it holds the top of our stone in place as well. Now, let me just wriggle that back one so that the back one comes over the stone as well. It should just... There we go. Lovely. So it's just caught the stone back and front. You've still got the two wires that go up the middle in there. Okay, but you've got one at the front one at the back. You could just do the other side. You could do this pendant if you wanted with three wires instead of using four. If you use three you've still got a uh, a wire that's laying up the central bit. I'm just putting the uh, the other side in here with the round nose pliers. Just twist that. That's it. Okay now has it brought the top shoulder in? Yes it has done. That's lovely. So we just need to get that back one in place. You could do it with five or six or seven wires, but you always have to remember, however many wires you use, you're going to have double that amount of wires at the top. So let me just wriggle this back wire over the back and the front ones over the front. Lovely. So my pendant's now in, but I've got a little gap just there. I'm sorry, my dogs have decided to come in and fuss me. Go lie down, sweetheart. Right. Um, back of the pliers and press. Most of my pliers, the the handles look quite dog-eared and it is because I use them for this. I just press the wires down onto the stone and push and rub. That way you don't get any marks on your wires but it sits down and then your stone's in and that's in really quite securely. You've got your little prongs holding the bottom in You've got your wires in holding the top corners and that really is not going to go anywhere. Now I'm going to take the back two wires and these will become our bales. So, if you've got quite a small stone I would suggest only using two wires as bales. But seeing this is quite a, a large stone I want to use more. So I'm going to use four wires 
to create the bales. So I take my back two wires and they become the middle two. And let's just get those off. Yeah, you can definitely take four wires can this piece. So there's my back two. And then I need the next two wires. So let me just... This is what I said, if you put all these into a big clump, you'd now have difficulty finding where those wires are. But because they're in a straight line, I can just go down and get the next two. And the next two are going to sit on the outside of the two that I've removed. So I've got the next row down, left and right, and I'm bringing them either side this is because I can't see because it's right because it's got the camera in between that's why I'm fiddling with it there we go, all four now you need to decide where the top of your bales are going to be I find the easiest way to do this is to actually put your pliers on because it gives you a nice firm straight line you can look at so you can look at it and think is that where I want the top of my bales to be I think that's a little bit too long so let's just shorten that a bit yeah, and I get this straight bar line and then you can imagine if that's the right sort of place to have the top of your bales. So then you can either use just normal round nose pliers but they do taper so you often get one side slightly smaller. Or you can use something like these which are uh, oval parallel pliers which I'm going to use. It's a little bit more difficult because it's trying to get the other wires out of the way while you get that big fat thing in the way. I'll get those nice and straight and then I just bend the wires down and away in a nice flat straight line of four wires and I'm just going to show you I'm the wrong way around so hang on a minute let me try and turn this all the way around there you go if you can see there's quite a big gap just there which is no good if I tried to fasten those two together it wouldn't work so I'm just going to bend that wire there all four together and then when I push them in, and I get the pliers out. <laughs> That's better. Whoops. Straighten that. Now when I push that down, you can see that the wires now lay lovely and flat down the back of the stone, but they tuck in just where the binding is, which of course is where we want them to be. So I'll just neaten that up with my pliers. Make sure it's all straight that the wires haven't crossed because I want all four wires to be really neat and now I can bind up and around I'm going to start just below that other binding so straight over the top with my sharp bend and then shift those there we go make sure that wire doesn't move and bend all the way around. Now I've given myself a decent end on there, there's probably about an inch you'll see why in a minute, so I'm just wrapping all the way around, don't worry about it getting loose at the first one we can tighten that back up in a second, so all the way around. Now I've got to the point where I'm starting to wrap over no, the top the of the other bindings that's fine, now the wire's twisting so just flatten that down with pliers there we go and then keep just tighten that one up there we go so it goes down and round nice and tight Okay. so I'm going over the top of the other bindings and that's okay it's nice and fine. This is the advantage of using the the 21 gauge because it doesn't make it too clumpy just there if we're using now the wire is twisted so that the flat side is trying to turn upside down so just put it back. Always want the flat side inwards and the dome side outwards. I'm going to keep wrapping until I get a gap until there's a big enough gap that I can actually pass this through the back of the bales push it well down 
and then wrap it around. Because this wire is quite fine, if you just cut it off and leave it, it can sort of pop back up again. If you were using 18 gauge, you could just cut this straight off at the side and it would stay pot. But because we're using 21, I like to wrap it around the bales just at the back, just two or three times. Then it can be cut off on the inside of the bales and it has got no chance then of scratching you while you're wearing it or you know sort of poking in or anything like that. So I'm just binding it around the back of the bale and constantly making sure that my bale's not getting scrunched up. I want it nice and flat, so scissors, scissors, honestly, snips, and I'm going to cut inside there so that the wire end, there we go, is inside the bales, and then I can just flatten that down with my pliers. Now, the other end. Now, you remember how I said leave a decent amount? This is why. I'm going to take the other end, pull it tight pass it all the way up the back of the bindings and also thread that through the bales. It's a great way of getting rid of it. It ties it in nice and neatly. It makes a... it looks quite nice actually across the back because you get this this little diagonal line across the back. Oops, pulled that a bit tight. We should have just about enough to go around sort of three times which is great and I'm just going to press that down. So lovely. I've got a nice neat binding. Everything's held together. There's a little gap just there. So again, back of the pliers and just give it a shove down. That's it. So this it sits nice and tight. Now then, these wires could just be trimmed straight off at the back, but I might leave them on. However, I'm going to suggest that this is a good time to have a break. We've been at it for over half an hour, so if you want to just put the piece down, go grab yourself a cup of coffee, let your fingers have a little rest, and then come back to it in a minute. Okay. So, we're back again. Um, yeah, I, I splayed these four wires out because I thought that that would look really, really attractive down the back. Now, if you wanted you could just get rid of them. You could just literally uh, take your snips and cut those wires as close to that binding as possible. But I kind of like them. I like this, you know, the back being really attractive as well as the front being really attractive. I, I've often sold pieces and people have worn them inside out. So I'm trimming off so that I've got, oh, I don't know what, quarter of an inch just beyond the edge of the stone makes it easier to work with the wires if they're not ridiculously long. Those bits will all go in the scrap pot. Um, like I say, it just makes your life easier if you're not working with great long pieces. Now I'm going to tuck them underneath that wire there and this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to grip with my round nose pliers on the end and start and just bend these and curl and get that end underneath in there and then as you curl it will pass through the other bit of wire and then you can just tighten it up onto the wire as you're going around. Little tiny bits at a time. You don't want to distort this. So then you can get hold of the the end. Can you see it there? And just um you see I do stuff wrong. I've totally missed the wire there. So I'm just going to have another go. Just pop it underneath the wire where it ought to be and not swinging around in the fresh air. Naughty wire. Right. So we tighten up against the wire with the round nose pliers and then using sort of snipe or chain nose just ease that around. You're already going in a circle. You've made a circle with your round nose pliers. Trim it off nice and short and then just press that end down with your pliers. Don't rush at it, 
you don't want to to snag all these wires up so nice and gently nice and slowly just press the end down lovely so it's nice and smooth now I'm going to do the same with the next wire so round those pliers grip the end and start and create a circle not too violent a circle because obviously you won't be able to get it through that wire that we're anchoring to just nice I'm going to make sure it goes underneath this time instead of missing it under we go that's it and just keep easing and then that circle will just carry on and bring your wire up if you just put a straight bend in and try and push the wire underneath it's really difficult to get hold of the wire and then actually bring it to wrap around because it's not automatically wanting to go in a circle whereas if you make it into a circle it's already doing half the work for you so I'm going to trim off nice and short and then get my pliers in and come here and press that's it down and over nice and smooth okay now I'm going to do the other two I think you've got the gist now so you don't need to watch there we go so I've got all four wires nice and neatly anchored onto those back wires this stone now is not going to come out it's absolutely in there solid which is great so my two little prongs there and my corner edges are holding the front in nice and firm so now really it's a case of what you do with the other wires that you've got left normally I take these two wires at the front and I put my finger on there and I would create um, a curl and I'd bring it down but I think yeah I'd just put a curl over the top of that bit and we'd have a swirl but with that back being so strong and geometric and and the stone itself being such a strong geometric stone that I don't think that's going to suit it obviously if you're using a different shaped stone you could just to hold the, t the two wires like that, put your finger on and have a nice swirl but I think this will suit something more like this, so I'll split the two front wires yeah, if I take one that way and then I bring the other one to the other side and have them sort of there I rather like that, it's um, yeah it's nice as that they're going to go inside there so they can't be too high up because they need to go into that I could wrap them and take them around the back but I think they will go in there quite nicely so I could put them further down and I do do a lot of this when I'm making Jorah and they could go higher up and go and actually wrap around the shoulder itself which is quite attractive but I do think I like them there best. I'll often rig wires around and see where I think they want to look uh, where they want to be and suddenly just one place just looks better to your eye I'm just going to close those down a little bit they're a little bit too heart shaped and I don't want that soft flowing, I want a, a straighter line so let's take some of this excess wire off, now I know I've got a lot left over but I didn't know what I was going to do with it so I'd rather cut a bit off then get to the end and think, oh, you know, I would have really liked to do more curls, but I can't. So I'm treating this wire exactly the same way as I treated the ones in the back. I've got my round nose pliers and I'm just bringing that round. I'm just going to give myself a little bit of room. In you go. That's it. If you're using a particularly soft stone, if you've got something like fluorite or um, like one of these, the Wello opals do be careful when you're doing this because it only takes slightest touch and you'll find that you've either marked the stone or, or worse you've cracked the stone uh, so nice and gently and then just ease that bit down so that it's nice and closed okay yeah then I'll do exactly the same with the other side so that it matches there we go yeah I'm kinda liking this now what to do with these other two wires 
usually I would bend the wires to one side like this and put them up the um, the bale let me just show you so I would bend sorry I'm going out of shot shift it there we go um, so you'd have a, a a curve that went up the bale and it would just detract from the fact that the bales very very straight but in this instance with such a geometric stone I don't think I'm going to do that I'm going to get rid of the wires now this is the easiest way to get rid of the wires just move one to one side one to the other side and I'm going to cut them really quite short there it's probably only a quarter of an inch and the same on the other side and then round those pliers grab the end and I'm just going to curve that so that it comes back in and touches let's do the other side grip on the end and just curve the wire over until it touches the body of the pendant the wire's gone, it's nice and neat, there's no sharp edges the back's all secure, the front's secure I just think we'll just open this up a little bit if you open the bales slightly just with your fingers it gives it almost like a butterfly wing effect which I think goes very well with the especially the lines on the back and there we go so try it with different stones use your imagination I'd love to see what you make thanks for watching happy wrapping <laughs>